The truth is, is that it's for all. It's for anybody. Whosoever will. Right? So if whosoever will can accept Christ and be born again, then whosoever will can be prosperous. Whosoever will can be healthy and whole and healed. Whosoever will can be victorious. Whosoever will can see a change in all the relationships and their life and everything else. Why? Because we're in this world, but we're not of it. We're partakers of the kingdom of God and seek ye first the kingdom of God. And once you begin to, uh, to, to meditate in the scriptures, who you are in Christ, then your eyes and understanding begin to enlighten and open up. And now you can begin to hear that voice, that voice of the wisdom that is crying. Well, what was it that walked with Adam in the garden? It was a voice, right? And it's the same voice. And that voice will share with you any and everything, anything you want to know. That voice knows exactly what you need to know and what you need to do, right? But that's as we become more uh, aware of the kingdom that we stepped into, right? And then you've got to give him access. Listen, you can't fly a kite on a calm day. Come on. It's like someone saying, you know, well, I got this problem going on. I need some wisdom. And you watch their lips. They don't move. And another person says, you know, I need some wisdom. And they go. You see movement. Well, the Holy Spirit moves. There's a flow. What? I will pray in the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding. I have it. I see it. I know it. And now I know what to do. But see, if you lock it up here in your brain saying, oh, I've got to figure out what to do, I got, and then you never let a flow happen, then you're just at the mercy of yourself. That's not a good place to be. Right? But when you begin to pray in tongues and you begin to read the Word of God and you begin to actuate the things that God has given us in order to open our understanding of the kingdom of God and who we are in Christ, worshiping God, meditating in the Word, walking in love, right, speaking in tongues, these things were given to, to edify us, build us up, make us sensitive so that we can are aware of everything around us. And you'll begin to see things before they happen. You'll know what's going to happen before it does, right? And this is walking in that kingdom. Now look at this. Verse 33, it says, But whosoever gives ear to me will take his rest safely, living in peace without the fear of evil, right? See, even though there's things going on around us in society and our nation and stuff, you know what? We could be at peace. You know? Well, well we're, we're just not going to get all concerned about that stuff. We just believe that it's in God's hands. It's His will. That's dumb. Right? No, He says what? Change it. You don't like it? Change it. What do you mean? Change it. Well, how do I change it? I'm just one person. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You give me wisdom. We release that anointing. You're going out. We're influencing people in the proper places. Lord God, thank you that your will is being done in this nation. You establish this nation. It will not fall. It will not fold. It will not be wicked in Jesus' name. We lock hands together and our hearts together. and We begin to cry out as one voice for your will in this nation, God. Hallelujah. And listen, the Holy Spirit may only have you as one here, but he's got one over there and one over there and one over there. Listen, you can trust and believe that there's literally hundreds of thousands or millions that have yielded their heart to God, and they're not out there griping and complaining and, 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 and crying and wondering, God, what are you doing? What's going on, God? What? They're standing up. They're speaking the Word of God. They're doing things. Praise God. And you know what? We can trust that something is happening. It's happening. Yeah. Praise God. 
And, and, and you know, right now the Holy Spirit is moving in such a, a, a phenomenal way. You can, you can see it all over the place, right? But that people that aren't aware of his movement don't see anything, right? So what do you got to do? You got to wake up to the kingdom of God. Wake up to the things of the Holy Spirit. We've got to open our heart and say, Holy Spirit, take charge, take over. I yield to you, right? Hallelujah. Now, now watch this. Isaiah 11, verse 2, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. See, that's the seven spirits that are before the throne of God, right? And that's what? Seven tributaries, all right? So when a river starts out, it doesn't start out as a roaring rapids, you know? You can take any mighty river, and if you follow back to the source where it starts, you can jump over it. You can leave over You can wade through it, right? But as the tributaries begin to be added to it, and it begins to come down. See, a river r runs only one direction. Down. Right? And that might be north, south, east, west or in between but it's literally one direction that's down what did God say I'm going to pour out my spirit down right so the Holy Spirit came out of heaven came down into us right and now he's flowing here's another thing you know about a spirit it takes the path of least resistance come on now, how come you don't see the effects and the power of the Holy Spirit in certain churches? Because they resist Him. And there are certain churches that don't resist Him. They open up and they say, we believe in you, Holy Ghost. Come on, do your thing. Whatever you want to do, we yield to you. And wherever that least resistance is, the Holy Spirit shows up. Right? And things begin to happen. Okay, so you might ask yourself, is there something in my heart, something in my thinking, something in my philosophy or my daily habitual routine that is resisting the flow of the Holy Spirit in my life? That's a good question, right? Well, I hear you, Pastor, but I don't see the Holy Spirit working all the time. Maybe you are resisting. Well, if I do, I don't know how. That's exactly right. And that's what he was sent to do, is to find those places and remove them. So yield to him. And the best way to yield to him is through taking the Word of God, meditating in the Word of God, the New Covenant, the New Testament, the finished works of Christ, and begin to uh, get those in your heart so that you begin to realize, now wait a minute, right? It's my right to be prosperous. It's my right to be healthy. It's my right to be healed. Why? I'm a child of God. Jesus Christ paid the price for it. I don't have to pay it again, right? I mean, if you own a car and you make that last payment and they come in and say, you know what? We decided that we want you to pay for it again. You're going to go, no, in no way, right? But then if the devil comes in and wants to give you a sickness or something like that, we just, okay, make another payment. You know, Jesus paid for it, but now we'll start adding payments. No! Oh, stop it! Right? He paid for it. Pain? Get out of my body. You have no right to be there. Jesus paid for you. Right? He already purchased my health. It's already done. You pick up your Bible and you say, I, I, I've got the pink slip. Now, it's in, in California. You know what I'm talking about, right? Someplace else, they may be having a different vision. <coughs> Pink slip means that you, that's the title of your vehicle. So after you make that last payment, they send you the title, which happens to be pink. <laughs> and, and, and that's what it's called, pink slip. It means I own it. It's mine. No more payments. And that's what the Word of God is. It's the assurity. It's the pink slip. 
We own health. We own prosperity. We own peace of mind. We own our children loving, serving God. We own our grandchildren loving, serving God. We, you know, it's already been given. It's, al it's already a promise that Christ has already fulfilled. It's ours. We need to learn how to accept it and receive it. And that comes by listening and yielding to the Holy Spirit. Right? Now look at this. He says, uh, Isaiah 44, you're there close. Verse 3, it says, I will give water to the thirsty land and make streams flow on dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your children and my blessing on your descendants. They will thrive like well-watered grass, like willows planted by the streams of running water. One by one, people will say, I am the Lord's. They will come to join the people of Israel. They each will mark the name of the Lord on their arms and call themselves one of God's people. Hallelujah. Now I have a son that doesn't realize that this verse is working in his life. Right? And he went out and got a tattoo. Oh, he's got lots of tattoos, but we, we were at a birthday party and, and, and my youngest uh, grandson, I think he was maybe two there, is looking at him and, and, and he says, Uncle, beep, did you draw on yourself? <laughs> <laughs> And he wanted to know because the day before, he got a spanking for drawing on himself. <laughs> Self-tatted, <laughs> right? So he's looking at, at his uncle, you know, <laughs> and I think he's wondering who spanked you, <laughs> right? But he got a tattoo, and, it, and, it, and, it's, and it's about God, right? And there's a cross, and I'm thinking, Woo! There it goes. Scripture's going, right? Amen. He says, you're what? The people of God. Now turn with me to John 7. Talking about being poured out. Talking about a river. Talking about the Holy Spirit and the flow and the move and the things that are going on. If you listen to people that are familiar with, with, with the move of the Holy Spirit and stuff, you know, they'll say things like, oh, boy, the, the Spirit was really moving. Boy, he was, he was flowing. He was, it's always something about, about, you know, action and things. You know, whoa, you should have been in church today. Well, the Holy Spirit just was like a statue. I mean, he was stoic, just sitting there and didn't do a thing. You know, no, when you get excited, it's because the Holy Ghost is doing something. You go all the way back to the very beginning. It says, it broke open. It says the earth was without form of void, and the Holy Spirit was... Right? It says vibrating. What? Waiting for the Word to come. And then God came out of His heart through His mouth. Let there be light. And the Holy Spirit went, there it is, right? But see, it wasn't like what, what we think, because the sun and moon wasn't made till the fourth day. So there was all darkness, but light came, and then he divided the light and the dark. How do you divide light when there is no light? Right? And see, I have a personal opinion about what that is. Of course, and I believe what he first created was wisdom, spiritual wisdom. There was a natural wisdom in the earth. It had a natural force, and then God phew, shot spiritual wisdom right in the middle of the darkness. Boom, and it became a separation. All right, what is that wisdom? Well, you follow that wisdom all the way through. You know, it shows up again as the tree of life, and then it shows up as wisdom, then it shows up as Messiah, the Christ. Crucified and died, raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of God right now, living on the inside of us. We live on the inside of Him. Right? Hallelujah. And so that Holy Ghost, when you get Him on the inside of you, He just goes, 
What? Waiting for that word. Waiting for that word. Pain, leave me. Say, well, you really think that'll happen? Well, for someone that believes. Right? And you might have to say it a number of times or something. Why? Well, first of all, you're, you've got to convince yourself that it's working. That's called persuasion. It took Abraham over 20 years to get persuaded. Right? And he was a friend of God and walked around with him. Right? He, he, no, I maybe won't go there. <laughs> but we got to listen that, that it's the same process. You believe it in your heart and you speak it and then it begins to happen and manifest, right? Hallelujah. So start learning how to talk to your body. Learn how to talk to your eyes, to your ears, to your joints. Learn how to talk to bills. Learn how to talk you know, to, to whatever that mountain is, whatever that problem is, start talking to it, making it move. You know, the Bible says the Word of God is like a hammer. You know, if you have a big boulder and you're going to break it into pieces, it isn't going to fall into dust because you hit it once. Sometimes you've got to hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it until you break that thing down, right? And there's times, and I know that people that teach faith says, if you say it twice, then it wasn't faith. Duh. But sometimes you've got to say it until you finally catch hold of what you're saying, right? So you might be just spitting seeds for a few days. But I'm telling you, there's a day when it clicks in your heart and boom, you know it. It's like a lightning bolt just shot out. And you know it's done. You know faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Right? I know it. It's done. Right? And when you know you know, then you know. You know? <laughs> now, now look at this. John 7, verse 37. You'll like this. He said, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst... Let him come unto me and drink. Now, this is the last day, the last feast. I may not get this exactly right. Dell will let me know. But in the last feast, the last day, the last time, really was like a celebration time, right? But they started out solemn. The priest would come up and he would have um, a, a golden urn or something, you know, and, and, and they take out because, because they lament over all the the sufferings and the things they went through and stuff, but then they begin to, <clears throat> to pour uh, water that came from the pool of Shalom, is that Shalom? Which is right there where they, they, they did their ceremonial washing and stuff before they went up into the temple, right? <clears throat> and the water was fed by an underground source that came in, right? <clears throat> and so the, the priest was probably, you know, coming from that that well with his his pitcher and coming up there getting ready to do it now what is the the water coming down well they had all the sacrifices up there i don't know how many you know lambs and rams and everything else that they sacrificed but they would they would wash off the the altar right with just you know the regular water and the water and the blood of the sacrifice would mix and begin to run down the street right and so Jesus walked over there and looked at this and then shouted out, If you're thirsty, come to me and drink. Right? Now, I don't know, if you didn't have a, a, a Jewish mindset, that is not a real good thing to shout out there. Right? Because of the ceremonial cleanness and the ceremonies and things that are going. Well, the, well, the, well, the, the priest was on his way up there, and, and, and he didn't like Jesus anyway. And here's Jesus in the middle of all that mud and blood and water and everything, saying, If you're thirsty, come to me and drink. Right? Now, what they didn't realize is that the Holy Spirit, the water, was in him. 
and that he was going to be crucified and he was going to shed his blood. And at the very end, when the Roman soldier pushed the, the sword up inside of him, what came out? Water and blood. Right? And we do what? Come to the well of salvation and drink. And what's in that well? Water and blood. That gives us the authority and the right of the inheritance that Christ gave us and passed on to us freely. Right? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. But it's the flow of the Holy Spirit, yielding to the Holy Spirit, knowing that He'll take the path of least resistance, so you need to make sure that you're not obstinate to the Holy Spirit in your life, that you don't get so caught up in your natural everyday events and your habitual lifestyle that you start becoming a resistance to Him subconsciously. You need to open yourself to the Holy Spirit. There's times when the Holy Spirit wants you to go here or do that or, or go. I've had where the Holy Spirit would just say, you, you know, go over to the store and, 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 and buy some ice cream. And, and I thought, well, no, I don't like their ice cream. I'd rather go down here. But it's like, no, go buy theirs. And I go over there and I meet someone that, that I minister to or something. And, and I realize it's not about ice cream. Right? <laughs> right? Amen. I know a pastor uh, that was, that, you know, heard this and he was saying, you know, God, I want to learn how to be led by the Spirit and I want to do this and everything. You know, and so he was just praying in the Spirit and he was on his way to, to church and, and, and the Lord said, take a left here. And, and he said, that's not the church. And he, and he went right through the intersection. But he couldn't get rid of that. And he said, take a left. And he says, okay, okay, okay. So he turned around and went, went back and, and made a right, <laughs> which was a left. You know, and went down. And he says, now take another left. And take, now take a right. <clears throat> and, and he just got in the flow. He just what doing. Was, was it an audible voice? No, it was just an impression that came to him. And he thought, well, it, it, you know, if it didn't, doesn't lead me anywhere, then, you know, what does it hurt? I'll just tell everybody I was late. You know, like Dave Dwell says, just practicing, right? And, and so he went, and he, there's a little market there, and he says, now get out and go in there and buy, buy some milk. And he hesitated. He thought, no, I'm not going to hesitate. I don't care. So he got out, and he went, and he bought some milk. And, uh, you know, and then he turned around and went up to go to the counter, and, and, and the Lord said, buy those Huggies. He says, now this is getting really strange. He says, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm just going to walk this thing out, whatever it is. So he bought the Huggies, and he got back in the car, and he thought, now go to the church. He said, no, go this way. And we went over, and he's, he's showing this, this house. He says, now go up and knock on that door. He said, oh. So he went up and knocked on the door, and, and, and a lady um, answered the door, and she had a you know, little one on her hip. And he says, you, you, you know, ma'am, he said, I, I, I don't know whether you believe in God or anything, but I believe in God. And my heart has just been wanting to do what God says and follow the Holy Spirit. And I was on my way to church and he told me to go here and do this and everything else. And, and I don't know, he says, but do you need some milk and some huggies? And she just broke and cried and wept. And, and he was a little startled. And he says, you don't understand. He said, I don't have that. I don't know where to get it. I can't leave. And, and, I, and I, uh, I haven't been born again very long, but I just cried out. And I said, if you're real, God, if you're really real, would you have someone bring me some milk and diapers? Huh? And here this befuddled pastor was standing on her door <clears throat> with milk and diapers. You know, how many times... Has the Lord tell us to go left, and we didn't quite catch it. Yeah. To go right, and didn't quite catch it. To go to this other place, to go eat here, or to do this or that, we didn't catch it. You know, there's no condemnation, there's no guilt. But I'm saying we've got to start removing the resistance for the Holy Spirit to begin to flow the way that He desires to flow. And we need to begin to expect it. Every day of my life, the Holy Spirit is doing something supernatural, either for me or through me, right? And we begin to, to desire that and want that. Now watch this. He said, uh, verse 38, 
says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly. Now the word belly there literally means the, the heart, the core of your being. All right. He says, out of his belly or his heart shall flow rivers, plural, of living water. Rivers, plural, of living water. Out of his heart, there's an outflow. What does a, a, a river start? It starts at the source, right? It may be small. You may be able to walk over it and wade through it and everything else. But there's other tributaries, seven tributaries that begin to feed it along the way as, 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 as you begin to get used to it and you yield to it, right? And, and that, that river begins to, to build, right, and moving. Now look at this. He says, verse 39, he says, But this spake he of the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, I need to read that again. Look at this. But this he spake of the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Which they that believe on him, they that believe on him. Do you got that? They that believe on him. Does that include every believer, everyone born of God? Everyone, no matter who they are, right? That they that believe on him should receive the Holy Spirit should receive. So is it God's will for us to be filled with the Spirit? Yes. Yes. Well, in my church, no, no, no. We're not in your church. We're in the Scriptures and Jesus is talking. Everyone born of God should receive the Holy Spirit. Right? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Now in closing, let me, let me look at this. We, we talked about it being like a river. Number one, it says... Um, it shall flow like rivers, multiple rivers with an abundance of never-ending supply, right? And that thing about a, a, a river, a river is, is there. Ten years, hundred years, thousand years, ten thousand years, it doesn't matter. It's always there. It's always part of the cycle, you know, of the rain coming down, the snow and everything else melting, and, and it keeps feeding, you know. As long as you don't block it or dam it up or do something with it, it's just going to be there. And so when we accept and receive the Holy Spirit and His abundant supply and all these things that are coming, what is it? It says that it's there. It's there every day, all day long, every day, forever. He's there. He's flowing, right? People have different ideas. You think, you know, in order to get the Holy Spirit going, we've got to get together and we've got to pray in the Spirit. We've got to... No, He's ever ready. He's ever ready. He's ever flowing. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops working. Right? Even if I don't see it, He's working. All right? Number two, it says, it starts from above and it flows downward. What it means is that it came from heaven, but it comes from us, you know, as we begin to yield to that. And that whole flow is to go to someone that doesn't have it. Right? Right? Understand that the Holy Spirit isn't going to be poured out of you to go upward to those that already know what they're doing. But it always finds itself going down, right? There's somebody that is in need of help that doesn't understand or know the Holy Spirit like you do. And the Holy Spirit is going to just naturally want to flow that way. So every time you see somebody, every time you walk by somebody, and somebody, you, 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 you'll have this attraction, this drawing, right? Even on the golf course, right? You know, it'll be the Holy Spirit saying, here's a low place, I want to flow. It could be with, with health or healing. It could be with finances. It could be with just, just peace and understanding. It could be with wisdom. It could be to receive Christ. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's a need, there's a hole. And the Holy Spirit wants to feel that. He wants to flow into it, right? And there's a process that sometimes you meet resistance, okay? But then the wisdom of God will begin to show you how to either remove that resistance and open that heart up, right? All right, number three. It starts out small until the tributaries begin to be added to it and it begins to multiply and it gets bigger, right? And so no, 
that if the Holy Ghost is, is working in you about the same as they did last year or the year before or 30 years before, or 50 years before that, then you're resisting. There's not that natural flow and it should be increasing. Every year of our life should be increased in the effects and the flow of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Why? The tributaries. What is the tributaries? Okay, look at this. The Spirit of the Lord. That's the main one, right? The Spirit of wisdom. The Spirit of understanding. The Spirit of counsel. The Spirit of might. The Spirit of knowledge. The Spirit of the fear of the Lord. These are the tributaries coming in. This is where the growth in the, uh, begins to come. Listen, one that, that is resisted and damned off with it from a lot is, is, is the, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Why? Because people don't understand what the fear of the Lord is. You know, we try to say, you know, uh, it's reverence. You know, well, there is a reverence there, but fear is fear. And it really talks about fear. You know, well, I'm not afraid of God. Well, it's not talking about the natural source of fear, you know, which is with torment and things, but the spiritual purity of fear, there's still a fear that is there. You know, if you were to step into heaven right now, you wouldn't run and jump up on his lap and say, hey, daddy, what's going on? If you were to be translated into heaven right now, you'd probably just get a rug burn on your nose. <laughs> you'd just fall, Right? Because the, the greater the glory, the more manifested the glory in His presence is, the less our human self can function, yeah. right? And that's the reason when the presence of God sweeps into a place, you know, people, they don't know what they're going to do. They may get up and run around and jump and shout. They may just fall on their face. They may cry. They may laugh. They may, we don't know. And you got other people look at it and think, you're all nuts. No, we're in the presence of God. Right? And you know what a dam says? A dam says what presence? So you may have a big dam on the inside of your heart where the Holy Ghost can't get through it. And so you look at all the supernatural things, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, and you may attribute them to the devil. You may attribute them to, to lunatics. You may whatever. But it's because you don't have a flow. Right? Now look at this. Number four, it flows where there's the least resistance. We already talked about that. Number five, the strongest flow of the river is seen when it falls quickly. There's just times that God can't wait around. Boy, there's someone that's in deep need and, and he wants to meet it right now. And that water is, is, is going to... Uh, glory be to God, right? That's that flow that'll get you up off your couch and go down and look for ice cream. <clears throat> All right? Or whatever it is. It's just something with the Holy Ghost. Just get, and, and you know, you know something is happening. Something is stirring. Something is going on. Right? You just hit the rapids. And that river is flowing quicker and faster and bubbly because he knows that if it's just a smooth, quiet one, you're going to go do what you normally do. So what does it do? Get your attention. All right? Now look at this. The next one. That river supports an abundance of life wherever it flows. And the Holy Spirit said, come and drink. Come and drink. Ye that have no money, come by any Drink the wines, eat the sweets, send to all those that are in need. Right? Why? Because God, through His Spirit, is literally wanting to change the whole world. Whether it's one person at a time or whether it's thousands at a time or hundreds of thousands being swept in. If we would just begin to open ourselves up if you had kick open those floodgates and knock that those dams out of your <clears throat> out of your river inside there and just say, God be God in my life. Right? 
We subconsciously try to direct the Holy Spirit. And you just need to kick those dams out and just let the Holy Ghost be the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You may feel embarrassed, but something phenomenal will happen. Amen? Now look at this. It says that stopping or impeding its flow will never stop the flow from the original source. That river will just move to someone else. But it is going to move no matter what. No matter how much you dam up your heart and you resist the Holy Spirit and you won't move because it doesn't line up to your theology or your thinking or whatever, He's just going to jump and move through someone else. It'll probably be your spouse. It'll probably be your kids or grandkids. I mean, He's going to move somewhere else. It's going to move on. It's going to go on. But He what? He already chose to move through generations. Right? So you might come from a generation that didn't have the flow of the Holy Ghost, but you keep backing up through those generations, you're going to find somebody that flowed in the Holy Ghost. Right? Yeah. So let's make a determination right now that our descendants aren't going to have to back up and find a generation where the Holy Ghost flowed, but it's going to continue on into our children and our children's children and our children's 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 children's, children's grandkids. <laughs> However long till the Lord comes back, right? And let's what? Let's desire and crave and want something deep and wide. The deeper the better, the wider the greater. Rushing, mighty rivers of living water being forced out of us into everybody we come into contact with. I remember reading a testimony of Smith Wigglesworth when he, he walked in, he sat down on a train and the guy behind him, you know, just started shaking and sweating and, you know, and, and, and he looked behind him and he looked at him and he says, my God, you convict me of my sins and grabbed his hand and put it on his head. And he said, I need God, and I don't, even, I, I, I don't even believe in him. Right? I heard a story, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but Albert Einstein walked up to a guy, and he, he looked at him, and he was a preacher. <clears throat> and he looked at him, and he said, I know the first, the second, the third, and the fourth, and touching on the fifth dimensions. He said, but I see you're from a dimension I know nothing about. I like that one. I like that one. We're not of this world. We need to take our costumes off. We shouldn't blend in so well. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 